The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 231. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on. She is a writer and editor and also a filmmaker, and I'm just really excited to have her on and share her tips and story with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Rira Yu. Rira, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Sure. First of all, hi. (laughs) Thank you for having me on the podcast. I'm a writer foremost, and I used to be the former editor of Porium Journal and Collaboration. And before I worked as an editor, I was mostly a production assistant. So I've been so before I worked as a journalist, I worked primarily on sets and shoots. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what's your cultural background? I'm of Korean descent. I was born in Seoul, Korea, and I immigrated to the States when I was three. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I'm not sure if this is actually a self-confidence quote, but it resonates with me. The quote goes, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. And that's by uh, Carl Jung, the psychiatrist. I like that quote. And, you know, I think it does relate with self-confidence because a lot of people out there, they let their circumstances define them instead of, you know, thinking what happened and what good can come out of it and what more like what else could happen. Like, you know, we all go through bad stuff and it's up to us to react to it, to take action, to go out there and keep moving no matter what our dream is. So, you know, I think that's a great quote. I think it's it really can resonate with the listeners knowing that, you know, whatever happens, it's still up to you to make it to make the change. So great stuff. And what would be your um, definition of self confidence? My definition of self confidence would be understanding that you have value regardless of your achievements and mistakes. I think a lot of people measure their self worth by how much money they make, what career they have, how they like what their appearance is. But those things are temporary. Once you strip all of that away, you have to kind of be proud of who you are. You have to be able to embrace your strengths and your flaws. So I think it's essentially learning how to be comfortable with your current self and trusting in your own decision making. Awesome. And I like that. And it's true, right? I mean, especially, you know, um, growing up as an as an Asian woman, you know, we've been pretty much told that if you don't go to school, get good grades, get a good job and get married, like that's not the definition of success. And we have to realize success is, you know, living life according to our terms, not anybody else's. And I think the moment, you know, we let go and realize that it's up to us to define what success is, that's when you can kind of like, let go of other people's opinions and just just go out there and live your life. So I really love yeah, that. Definitely. I, yeah. really, <laughs> I really love that definition that you mentioned. So thank you so much. And Rira, what would be, um, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? In short, difficult. <laughs> I guess I learned to devalue myself from a very young age. I learned to make myself smaller, try not to make that much noise and try not to be noticed. I guess it's because I was bullied throughout grade school and I would say even up till the end of middle school. And a lot of my teachers, they were not very supportive. I remember like all of my elementary school teachers telling my parents that I would never amount to anything, that I was unintelligent and that it would be a miracle if I went to college. And I tried to cope with all of this negativity by trying to be a perfectionist, I kind of shut my feelings off and just told myself, you just have to be better, you have to work harder. And that just eventually led to some self-destructive thoughts. I It led me to anxiety, depression, and pretty much, like, it pretty much led to me having suicidal thoughts. So that was pretty much my life before I discovered self-confidence. 
Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's it's crazy what happens when we start devaluing ourselves, right? Even from at such a young age, we have all these thoughts that we fight with. And, you know, I was like you too. When I uh, moved, went to high school in the Philippines, you know, I was at an all-girls school run by nuns. And they thought I was, I would never amount to anything. They all, they all thought I was a troublemaker. And, you know, it's great that I just went up there and, you know, just kept on, do, you know, studying and doing, getting good grades. And, you know, in the end, like they, they just said, you know, you were wrong. We were wrong. You know, you aren't the person that you were when you first stepped foot in this, in the school. And it's amazing what you can do when you shut out other people's opinions of you and you just, you know, live your true self. And, you know, not every person can, can live like that, right? I mean, some of, like you said, you had to go through some, you know, thoughts that were suicidal and, you know, I'm glad that you're still here. And, and what was that point in your life when you realized you, you were better than that? You were, you could, you know, um, get out of it. What was that aha moment? I would say I had a string of aha moments. They were very tiny moments and they just kind of accumulated into this big wave. But one moment that I really uh, remember strongly was, I think it was my junior year of uh, college. I was going to NYU and I was part of the dramatic writing program. And I had told my professor in a one-on-one meeting that I didn't think I was good enough uh, to be in, to be a part of the program. I said I didn't deserve my spot. I didn't deserve my scholarship. I was untalented, lazy, and really, after I graduated from college, I'm pretty sure no one's going to care about what I write or what I have to say. And she just looked at me with wide eyes and just was silent for a couple of couple of seconds. And she just stared at me and said you're a good writer, you're talented, you're hardworking, but more importantly, you have empathy, you're compassionate. If you could just save some compassion for yourself, you would be a great writer, you would be unstoppable. And it was just one of those moments when I realized that the only reason why I wasn't happy, the, the the main reason why I wasn't confident in myself was because of my self loathing. And I think at the, like after that moment, I had sought out professional help. I, I looked for a therapist, and that was when I started my journey to recovery. So I would say that was one aha moment I had in my life. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, we're as women, like we're so good at like self self sabotaging and self loathing. You know, it's it's great that, you know, you had a professor that told you, you know, you, you're a great writer, you know, you go out there and just do it. And especially because you're such a compassionate uh, writer, it will, you know, it would come through your writing, which is, you know, amazing. And, you know, I was like that, too. When I first started this podcast, I thought nobody was going to listen. <laughs> you know, I, was thought, <laughs> I thought people were going to, like, make fun of me and thought I was crazy. And, you know, I had a mentor too, kind of like kick me in the butt and said, what's wrong with you? Like, just put it out there. And, you know, I'm glad that he was able to do that. And, you know, because of your realization, what's your life been like now? Well, it's, it's still pretty difficult. Self-confidence is definitely something that I struggle with every day. But I've, gotten a lot better with dealing with negative thoughts and the self-loathing. Like whenever a negative thought about myself pops up in my brain, I learn to just kind of reframe it in a positive light. So um, like if I wake up, I wake up one morning and say, oh, like I'm worth nothing. There's nothing I can do today that that is worthy of anything. And then I'll just kind of stop and say, no, you're going to you're overreacting, you're going to do great things today, it's going to be a great day, the day hasn't even started. So it's been a lot of reshifting my, my perspective on things. And I've been, I've been just surrounding myself with more positive people. So they're able to check in on me and say, hey, remember, you're great, you're fantastic. Just stop and like, admire yourself for, for a moment. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's true. It's who you surround yourself with is so important. I mean, sometimes you just need a person to say, hey, you're awesome. Just go out there and, you know, kick ass. And, you know, some, something that simple can really brighten up a day because you, you, you've you learned to surround with yourself with like-minded people who can lift you up when you have those down days. And you're right, you know, self-confidence is going to be a forever journey, but we get better and better the more we are aware, aware of ourselves and our surroundings. So, uh, Rira, you know, for the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in a similar journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? 
I'll probably steal from my professor's words to me, which is to save some compassion for yourself. Be kind to yourself and surround yourself with people who inspire you and、uh, make you a better person. I think I found my group of people pretty late in my life, and I don't know. There's there's such a difference now because when I was younger, because I was bullied and because no one. Believed in me, and people kept devaluing me. I taught myself to devalue myself, but now, because I'm surrounding myself with people who are more positive and who bring out the best in me, I'm able to bring out the best in myself. So definitely surround yourself with people who will inspire you to be better. Awesome. Those are some great tips. So thanks for sharing that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know you and a little bit more of what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? I have a website. It's rirayu.wordpress.com. I blog there. I post some of my writing, my articles, and、uh, pieces of writing there. And my Twitter handle is rirabu. And I tweet a lot of things about things I like, like K-pop and TV and games. So if you're a fan of that, then find me there. Awesome! Thanks for sharing that.、And、to our listeners, if you want to connect with Rira, you can also head on over to the Tao Self Confidence dot com and search for Rira's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Rira for taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. It was an honor having you on and share your story. And listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self Confidence. Get your free self talk tape for building self confidence by visiting our website at the Tao of Self Confidence dot com. Your inner journey to self confidence awaits. 